I got a question. I don't know if, if uh, Andy's got an opinion on the choke point two sure. stuff. I'm sure. curious what he, what his thoughts are there. Yeah, yeah. Let's get into it. Well, Andy, what do you think? Yeah, I think facts and circumstances suggest that there's coordinated action. I mean, it's too convenient that all these moves by various agencies, whether it's FDIC or Fed or Treasury, uh, Signature Bank. So I just re- so Bar- Barons um, interviewed Frank Barney Frank and published it over the weekend. He clearly thinks that they didn't need to be taken, you know, out back to the woodshed, yeah. uh, and yet they were. And um, we know that several members of the administration have never been friendly to Bitcoin and crypto. I mean, all the nonsense and the fraud and the schemes gave him a golden opportunity uh, to attack the whole space such as it is. And, um, and why, you know, why wouldn't they, especially when you've got uh, Liz Warren, Senator Karen, uh, you know, spouting off about how she's going to raise an, raise an undead army to, uh, to attack, <laughs> to attack crypto. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's obvious, right? It's obviously coordinated. I don't know what the result will be. Oh, I didn't even, you know, mention, uh, you know, Custodia and, uh, and Caitlin Long's attempt at, uh, at a narrow bank, essentially, to, yeah. to serve the Bitcoin space. So, yeah, all the facts and circumstances indicate coordinated action is all I have to say. So when when I completely agree with you, um, what are they going to do about Square, Fidelity, NASDAQ, I guess, is wanting to get into the custody game. So, like, they're, in my opinion, you're dealing with multi-billion dollar enterprises here that ha- have already, you know, integrated the the rails of the future and the money of the future into their way of doing business. And I don't think that they can be so easily uh, manipulated by the government uh, hammer uh, with all the Wall Street competitors when we look at those three in particular, because they're just so massive. So do you have any thoughts around that? Those yeah, guys, it's a great cause... it's a great point. Fidelity has a unique position in not being a public company, being private, so they can kind of do what they want. They've been in it for so long now. They've been in Bitcoin, I think, since 2013, roughly, if I'm remembering correctly. And um, these are big institutions. They have real clout. Um, Fidelity, you know, in particular in uh, in Massachusetts, we need to we need to get uh, we need to get. Senator Warren in a room with Abby, jo- with not Abby, just jo- Abby. Uh, what is her name? The CEO. Yeah. Johnson. Yeah. Abigail Johnson. Um, get, yeah, uh, sure. get a meeting of the minds. I'm sure that would go great. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's powerful, this asset is big enough and there are powerful enough people and institutions that it's, it's going to find a home and the banks too. I was surprised to learn that, the number of banks, I think Caitlin uh, provided this statistic, the number of banks that have been banking quote unquote crypto in some capacity was like over a hundred. And I don't know who all those institutions are, but there's going to be scrappy players that pick up the pieces that want the business. Even though, even though government has made it harder for them, my guess is somebody will be willing to do it because there's money to be made. What do you think, Preston? No, I agree with you. I, I, when I'm looking at everything that's happening, everybody, and I think everybody kicking and screaming about it is, is raising great awareness, and I think it needs to be raised. Um, and I think the thing with Signature was, was very suspect. And the, the fact that you have Barney there who basically drafted all of the global, global financial crisis <laughs> legislation and stuff was literally sitting on the board is way yeah. too ironic. Um, But, uh, yeah, I think that, I think it's important to highlight that, but I think it's also important to, to, uh, to shine a spot, a spotlight over on areas that are large multi-billion dollar, uh, banks and, and platforms that have it fully integrated. I mean, as far as square goes, like going on the cash app, like it is just too easy. Like it's insane to go on there and conduct a buy routed over to the lightning network seamlessly like 
the, the person using Cash App doesn't even know if they're on layer one or layer two. It's completely seamless to them. And so like they are so far out in front of it. And I don't know what their market cap is, but I would guess it's like a 40 to $50 billion enterprise. Like good luck, like good luck going up against their lawyers. Um, I can only imagine what their, yeah. what kind of lawyer they could hire. Fidelity yeah. too. I mean, Fidelity is just this big behemoth in the traditional financial industry. And they just, they just released their product for Bitcoin buying to their retail clients. Some like 37 million yeah. retail accounts can now buy Bitcoin. Now I'll be interested to see if they could, they allow self-custody. I think that eventually. that's, that's I think that's the next, the next step. luckily we have square demonstrating it to the, to the whole U S what right looks like. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's my concern too, Sam, is that you get a fidelity and then you get this initiative that people aren't allowed the custody out of these holdings and you have to keep it on because that's whenever you get all the cash settled derivatives, uh, activities and like we, we need as a community need to really beat the drum on. So, Hey, Fidelity, when are you going to allow people to withdraw their, their assets off of, off of your platform into self-custody? Like it is so important yeah. for people to, to really hammer that home online and with whoever. 